the bible says and your ear shall hear a voice saying this is the way walk ye in it and if you are foolish enough to follow he promises you that you will find rest there is rest in his leadership when the holy ghost leads us the lord is my shepherd he says i shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures the bible says he leads me before the quiet waters and he restores my soul then he guides me along the path of righteousness for his name's sake he does it for his name's sake he does it for his reputation he does it as a responsible father as a responsible creator listen to me people of god it pays to respect the leadership of the holy spirit you may not look like it but if you can submit to the leadership of the holy spirit the rabbi of the ages he's a master at leading men to the place of destiny in the midst of the confusion he guides you he leads you until you find a heaven your life becomes a sign and a wonder at the instance of his leadership he's worth your attention he leads by his word he leads by his voice so every time we gather like this listen to me we're not just here to honor a program or to listen to a man more than that we are here as proof of our hunger for his leadership that one moment of a genuine encounter with his word when that word comes as light it is able to take you to realms unimagined this is true this is not a sermon god is able to lead men to the place of destiny otherwise why is he god he's able to lead us he's able to guide us our assignment is to trust his leadership and then to submit to his principles it is a foolish student who argues with a lecturer when he guides you don't change the formula be foolish enough to respect what he gives you to the latter and all that will be left at the other side of your obedience is a sign and a wonder a tearsome testimony you will be the first one who even is afraid of your own testimony it is true i believe him i believe his leadership he does not waste our time now you have given your attention to things and people of lesser value it pays to pay attention to him give him a chance to turn your life into a sign and a wonder don't sit arguing wondering can god do something about my life this is the ancient of days he's a master at making men it's not only the heaven and the earth that he makes he's not only the maker of heaven and earth he's a maker of men ancient words ever true they're changing me and changing you we have come with open hearts so let the ancient words jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 it says to stand in the way and to ask for the old path please look up it says wherein is the good way and walk daring and you shall find rest for your soul but here is the response that people will usually give we will not walk therein we went to school we have our own formula around life we've been intelligent we are well traveled the Holy Spirit comes knocking, beckoning on as many people who can pay attention to him. I will turn you into a sign and a wonder, he says. It's up to you to believe me enough. Take the risk. Believe me and blame me if I don't make you. My spirit is fired up tonight. We'll have a few minutes. But please pay attention to that which I'll be sharing with you tonight. 
I prayed to God bowing my knees this evening and I said, Lord, world over people will be following this conference, be following this meeting. I pray that they would not only follow just to honor a program, but that they will listen to be transformed. Listen to be transformed. Listen to be transformed. You can listen just for information. You can listen because your, your ear happens to be around where sound is being made. But you can listen intentionally for the purpose of transformation. He says, meditate on these things. Paul was teaching his son Timothy. He says, give yourself wholly to them. Leaves you with an assurance that your profiting will appear unto all. He that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. Are we blessed? The mysteries of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom. I want to share with you two very deep revelations tonight that I believe in the name of Jesus will truly be a blessing to us and will open us up to tremendous dimensions of God's power and grant us the fortitude to produce uncommon, unusual, extraordinary results in the name of Jesus the Christ of God. Praise the Lord. And whilst the word is coming tonight, it will be as it were in Acts chapter 10, that while the Holy Ghost yet spake this, while Peter yet spake these things, the Holy Ghost fell. I want you to be sensitive not only to hear, but to also receive. I believe that there are engracings that will be happening whilst we're listening inside all of the overflows down to the basement outside. Let your attention be wrapped on the word as it comes. Those following from any nation, just pay attention. Lend your destiny this time and let God work wonders in our lives. In the name of Jesus, please write this down. God is a God of patterns. I'd like to start tonight by reminding us and for some bringing it as a new information to your Christian experience that God is a God of patterns. A pattern is a modus operandi. A pattern is a prescribed or authorized methodology. It's a formula. The means of achieving a desired result predictably is called a pattern god is not only a great god god is not only a mighty god he is a god of patterns oftentimes we'll see in scripture that he hardly does the same thing twice when he starts a process he will reveal it as a dimension of himself and then he will surround it with a spiritual pattern for its continuity are we together now he made the first man he made the second the first man and the first woman and never had to put his hand to mold and make a man again he designed a pattern in them for the continuity of the human race are we together now he did the first planting the first watering and created a pattern around agriculture that makes for supplies. God is a God of patterns. Patterns are the correct way things are done. Patterns. They are the pathways that guarantee predictable outcomes. That means that it is on the strength of patterns that our Christian experiences find predictability and even continuity. In the dealings of God with men, you may want to listen and then write. In the dealings of God with men, please listen. We are not at liberty to invent our way of knowing and following God. When it has to do with walking with God, creativity is not needed. It is obedience and surrender. It's when it has to do with legislating on behalf of the kingdom, then you can bring in your creativity. But as far as following God is concerned, you need obedience and adherence. Men are not at liberty to invent their way of walking with God. There is a prescribed way to walk with God in order to get results and then in order to leave a foot a divine pattern has been adhered to. Success is proof that a divine pattern has been adhered to. 
Blessings to you, Minister Dunsin. Thank you. I love you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Success at any level is proof that a divine pattern has been adhered to. Failure is also proof that a divine pattern has been ignored, violated, or not thoroughly followed. I'll come again. Failure is proof that a divine pattern has been ignored way he is not only truth he's not only life he is the way are we together now in genesis chapter 4 probably the first authentic representation of a man's willful violation of god's pattern outside of the garden genesis chapter 4 please we'll read very quickly the first seven verses the bible says and adam knew his wife eve and she conceived and bare cain and said i have gotten a man from the lord and she again bare his brother abel and abel was a keeper of sheep the bible says but cain was a tiller of the ground follow the story verse 3 it says and in the process of time it came to pass that cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the lord so he's talking about offerings giving five verse four says and abel he also brought up the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof and then the bible makes a very interesting statement he says and the lord had respect regard unto abel and to his offering first the man then his activity the bible says but unto cain and to his offering he had not respect as a result Cain was very wrought and his countenance fell. Please keep verse 5. Very interesting statement. There are consequences for violating divine patterns. There are consequences for being and living in ignorance. This is one of it. Frustration. Your Christian experience becomes a plethora of frustrations. From one circle of frustration to the other. Cain! was sad and angry why because his life was not producing the kind of result he wanted verse 6 and the lord said unto cain why art thou wrought why art thou angry and why is thy countenance fallen verse 7 is a very powerful instruction if thou do as well that means if you do what you do according to pattern shall thou not be accepted and if you do not do well be careful your frustration will lead you to a point where sin lies at your door frustration that is prolonged has a consequence it will push you into all kinds of things bitterness envy anger it says Cain, the cure for all these things that are happening to you is to understand divine patterns because that outcome can also be a possibility in your life sin lieth at your door and unto thee shall be his desire and thou shalt rule over him when you read the other part of the story the bible says cain killed abel divine patterns if violated have severe consequences we're dealing with the mysteries of the kingdom but it's important for us to understand because you see results in this kingdom do not just happen please understand this results are very methodical results are predictable because they they happen at the instance of spiritual patterns results are not an issue of opinions they are not just an issue of um you know sociological or tribal or whatever affiliations whoever can subscribe to that pattern there is a guarantee there is an investment of god's integrity upon his patterns if you're with me please say amen, amen. exodus chapter 25 moses receives an instruction to build a tabernacle in the wilderness we'll read verse 9 and then we'll jump to verse 40 exodus chapter 25 it says according to all that i show you moses is receiving an instruction now after the pattern of the tabernacle it says and the pattern of all the instruments thereof even so thou shalt make it so to build 
the tabernacle in the wilderness. Moses was taken in the spirit to see the tabernacle in heaven. And he said, make sure you sustain that same pattern. And then verse 40 says, and look that thou make them after their pattern, which was shown unto thee on the mount. Let me tell you this. This is very powerful. Because this is a principle that is also used in witchcraft and occultism. I'm not here, to, we're not discussing demonology tonight, but let me explain something. When someone goes to meet a herbalist, please look up, and says, I want to take a charm or I want to introduce a spirit to my house. Do you know what happens? The victim does not even know what is happening. They conjure spirits. And those spirits reveal the pattern that simulates their current environment. They want to come to your house. They can't come to your house till your house looks like where they currently are. So the native doctor he sustains intelligence through divination by conjuring all the substances, spiritually and physically, that can simulate the current habitation of that spirit. Are we together? You take a token of that atmosphere to your house. Now, whether the spirit is in your house or where it was, it does not know the difference again. Because whether it's in your house or it's in that place, the pattern that makes for his presence is already there. Are you getting what I'm saying now?